My name is uh, Mr. Gu Jinping from Shanghai Tower. I'm the general manager for the project. So Shanghai Tower actually is in the uh, middle of uh, Lu Jiazui Financial District in Shanghai, and uh, it stands for 632 meters tall, with 127 floors. It's a mixed use of uh, office, retail, hotel, and uh, cultural facilities. And uh, it's probably uh, uh, have 570,000 square meters total, if I can remember correctly. So for the tall buildings, uh, it's not easy to not only look at the height of the building, but looking at what's the impact to the city and the future of our urban development. So as an owner and our team, when we start the project, we look for four most important aspects uh, for these buildings. And we can proudly say that today, all those four aspects as a goal for our project has been accomplished. First of all, I think we look at this building as an open urban communities. As you guys can see from the pictures, the Shanghai Tower is although have 578,000 square meters tall at volume, it's, we divided it into nine different urban communities. So this is not a single building, so it's about an additive of urban communities and vertically stacking on top of each other. So it's most important for this building to be built, not only for the owners and the, the occupancies, but also it's important for the city of Shanghai, for the people of Shanghai, and the people from elsewhere, from the other part of the world. So in these nine zones of vertical communities, the total contains about 21 sky gardens, or where you can, people can meet and gather and can enjoy the city life. Second and most important aspect for the building is uh, the sustainability and the green concept. It's a, a huge responsibility for, the, uh, for our uh, development company and uh, for, for the city of Shanghai. The energy conservation and the green technology has been a major part of the goal has been set up in the beginning of the project. Uh, in our building, we, we have a total of about over 40 different types of technology for achieve the green and sustainability uh, uh, innovations uh, in this building. In this picture, uh, is one of the examples is uh, we have the wind turbines on top of the building because the wind speed is uh, 6 meters per second. The rainwater collection in the top of uh, Shanghai Top of Crown, uh, part of uh, uh, the green roof. So Shanghai Tower, uh, by accomplishing all those uh, aspects of a sustain, a sustainability uh, design, uh, being awarded not only for China three-star uh, green design uh, uh, category, but also as a, the only one building over 400 meter tall buildings being awarded the, the lead pattern from the United States. The third aspect, the innovation about technology of construction. Uh, as the second tallest building in the world, uh, there's many aspects of construction has been the uh, break over the box and uh, have been lots of innovation, ideas and the technology involved during the construction. And uh, the current wall uh, total contains 140,000 square meters of, of the uh, glass. And it, it's composed with over 2,000 pieces, exact 2,357 pieces of glass. And it's been double skinned, suspended uh, outside of, uh, from, the, uh, from the slab. Also, it's, it's been, has been designed to a flexible to tolerance for the wind load. Uh, this is the damper on top of the building. Uh, right now, uh, this is the, the heaviest, uh, the weights the most, uh, the damper in, in, in any skyscraper in the world. It's over 10,000, uh, 1,000 tons. So the beam technology has been overall uh, installed in the whole life cycle of the building design, construction, and the building management and operations. So for the client, they are most proud of the beams not only being used in the design and construction, but also today they have been successfully be utilized into the building management and the building operation system. 
the pursuit of a cultural elements uh, into our building design and construction. Uh, for Shanghai Tower being a vertical city and a vertical skyscraper, uh, uh, as a vertical community, we look into that the cultural application into our building has to, has to be very important. And uh, the combination, the connectivity between the public space and the cultural events and the cultural activity has been looking upon the very most important element of our design and building management. Particularly into how translate the Ch traditional Chinese culture and the Shanghai local culture into this skyscraper building has to be the most important element uh, today. Uh, this Guanfu Museum is one of the most important Chinese ancient art collection museums in China. Now it's placed in the 37th floor of Shanghai Tower. It's the highest museum uh, in elevation in China. This is one of the Suzhou Garden, one of the most ancient Chinese uh, garden has been installed into one of the sky gardens of Shanghai Tower. Uh, this is the art space uh, designed by artists, which in conjunction with the technology of, of the, uh, the, the damper technology together. So this became the highest art space in the world. Uh, and the last, I think, is the most important for this pro the meaning for our uh, the, the project is uh, this wall is is, a, is on a wall for all the people over th four thousand people involved engaged uh, in this project, uh, constructors, architects, designers, administrators, also the, during the, all the process, all those all the peoples and the families made a lot of sacrifice, so. For our building, this building is not only for us as a legacy, but as a, the legacy of those people and their family, and all the, the, those people in, engage in the process and build the contributions. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Grant Euler with uh, Gensler. Uh, really an honor to be here to. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Shanghai Tower. This is a, an image uh, taken uh, showing the blue sky in the fall autumn day in Shanghai, and it reminded me this morning of this blue, wonderful autumn day in Chicago, uh, with one exception, and that is it's been over a century since the Chicago Cubs won the World Series, uh, which is just an amazing thing. And I started to think about 108 years ago, um, and I think about an opportunity to design a building like this, and, and what so much of the council research and innovation is about is thinking ahead for 108 years. And these types of projects are going to last for a long, long time. And I know the students from IIT that are here uh, and the emerging professionals, uh, think about the work that you're involved in and how you can push that forward and advance it. Uh, what we've tried to do here with the Shanghai Tower is a new symbol of Shanghai. Uh, it's a gateway to China and Asia. The 127-story tower speaks to Shanghai's place in the world order, to its transformation as a global metropolis. And yet the impact goes well above and beyond a goal uh, and an icon of a global financial capital. Its location in China, uh, which is one of the world's leaders in construction and super tall buildings, places it at the center of discussions about the future of cities. Again, much of what the council is researching and, and discussing. Urban habitat, sustainable development, many of the programs that you've heard earlier today. The urban context, it's of the three towers in this location, it's the most forward-looking of the three towers that anchor the Lujuaje commercial district. Uh, it was designed by a local team, uh, a group of experts, and experienced talent from around the world came and lived in residence in Shanghai for three years during the design and into the construction process. Uh, it was important to be developed and designed locally. And the mixed use component I think is really important for a sustainable super tall or mega tall building because there's a lot of uh, energy efficiency, sustainable principles in a mixed use development that we were able to leverage. The rounded triangular footprint uh, and floor plate is derived from the relationship to the adjacent two towers, Jen Mao and the Shanghai World Financial Center. Uh, and it's also a response to the bend in the river. You see this building from many vantage points all through Shanghai. A lot of transformation over two decades. 
The upper left is 1990, looking from Pux from Puxi near the Bund uh, across to Pudong. Primarily low-scale manufacturing, uh, agricultural, uh, and then in 2008, uh, you see the rapid development and what it looks like today in the lower image. The Shanghai Tower accommodates 30,000 people. It engages the city through the connective tissue of parks, plazas, streets, sidewalks, and transit, much of what you just heard about these vertical urbanism and sky gardens. It's a continuing cultural legacy and it's its balance of the three towers. This is an area looking down at the three. It was part of a planned development program that this would be developed as the financial uh, capital of Asia uh, in this district of Shanghai. Vertical urbanism, we take that from the city's tradition of small scale courtyards and neighborhood parks and we've recasted them in a high density urban form. The tower is designed to embrace and stimulate the life of the city, celebrate the citizens of Shanghai. Uh, it draws on the Chinese people's affinity for indoor outdoor living. That's a lifestyle that's reflected in the city houses known as Shikumen, where indoor and outdoor space blends together. We've tried to do that here in a modern way, a forward looking way with the Shanghai Tower. Same planning concept, but it's applied vertically versus horizontally through 21 sky gardens. This idea of city and the tower versus a tower in the city, it's this yang, yin and yang, and you see the adjacent towers next to that. A balance of culture, nature, and future. Embracing technology, managing uh, and measuring the energy performance, uh, how the building is living and breathing. And I want to talk just a little bit about the form and function uh, during the design process, process Gensler and Thornton Thomas study are structural engineering and, and Tone G, our local design institute partner, uh, and RWDI, we looked at a variety of strategies on trying to optimize the form and function. It's continuing to refine and, and rationalize and optimize all of these moves so that they create a better whole. Uh, we looked at a variety of different twists and tapers. 120 degrees was the optimal taper as we studied in the uh, wind tunnel uh, model uh, at the lab in the upper left corner. And we reduced through optimization and this taper and twist the impact of wind, the lateral forces of wind. We take advantage of the wind through generating electricity through the wind turbines, but we're also able to confuse the wind and by doing that, we were able to low, lower the structural rigidity required. Uh, it, it wasn't acting as a strong sail or as a true vertical, this twist and taper like an airplane wing. We reduced that by 24%, saved almost $60 million US. Stack neighborhoods. Each zone is a neighborhood within its own, uh, supporting program and infrastructure. Again, the mixed-use component, I think, is a sustainable piece. We can take excess energy from one use and apply it to another use. Hotel peak period is different than it is in the office and taking advantage of that. These are just some sections uh, cut through the building to show you the mixed use. So at the base, we have a retail podium. Uh, meets the ground with a six-level retail podium that houses shops, uh, retail, cafes, restaurants, uh, below-grade parking. Uh, there's also a large conference center uh, within this zone, uh, and that houses uh, uh, multifunction hall. It's the largest gathering space uh, east of the Hongpu River uh, for concerts, performance, art exhibits, social events, this cultural connection that, uh, that June spoke of earlier. There's also an underground walkway that connects to the subway line and the other adjacent towers. So just the, getting people in and out efficiently, 30,000 people on a daily basis requires a lot of thought uh, and planning. Some shots of the podium. We have these amenity sky lobbies, uh, these sky atria, uh, the vertical communities. Uh, and this is uh, right above the refuge floor, right above the mechanical floors. I mentioned a series of stacked communities uh, within the tower. And these become places of respite uh, for um, uh, coffee break, for lunch, so you don't have to traverse and use energy for elevator and all the way down uh, to, the, to the ground plane. You can, you can take your break up in the sky. Uh, and incorporated in this double skin facade, which is also uh, works as a thermos, uh, keeps 
the occupants cool in the summer and warm in the winter, and that space between is a great amenity space, uh, a green zone, if you will. Office level, uh, there's about uh, 70 floors of office, so that's a large component of the mixed use. Uh, large open office plates that look through this double facade and these sky atrium spaces, uh, and, and looking at, at efficiencies for uh, multinational tenants looking for Class A office space in Shanghai. Uh, above that is the hotel, uh, and, and one of those amenity sky gardens is the uh, reception space and the fitness center pool for the hotel in that zone. Those are, these are some images of some of that common space. Uh, and then at the top of the tower is the observation zone at level 120 and 121 and 122. Uh, and that is a cultural experience uh, with tremendous views uh, out and, and back to the tower uh, from the neighborhood. And above that, is this massive tune damper. And so it really becomes a, an experience for people to come up and actually see the damper moving as designed as the tower is responding to the wind conditions. So it gives you, much like Taipei 101 with that active uh, viewing uh, platform, this has the same uh, type of feel. Uh, we talked a little bit about the structural features and the taper uh, and the twist. Many, many studies early on. Uh, the structural components are made up of a composite core that steps back as, as you go up. Uh, again, working with uh, Thornton Tomasetti on the design of that. That's also coupled with a series of super columns at the perimeter and these steel outrigger trusses that, that connect the core to the perimeter columns. And then they're ultimately tied together with something called a steel belt truss. Uh, this kind of belts and suspenders on this tower at those uh, mechanical refuge floors just below the sky garden. Vertical transportation is extremely important for mixed use, super tall, optimizing the efficiency of elevators. We're using a, a system that's really was developed in Chicago, uh, a double deck shuttle up to those sky gardens and then you transfer to local lifts. Uh, in addition, there's also uh, very high speed elevators to take you, uh, whisk you up to the top of the uh, observation deck uh, at about 45 miles an hour, so the world's fastest elevators uh, to date. Shape and performance, optimizing the perimeter. We talked about leveraging technology. It's all about rationalizing the MEP infrastructure using BIM technology. Uh, using parametric design, I think these new technologies, and again, the students and the, and the audience will attest to this, this is an opportunity really to leverage and optimize buildings for the future. We use technology like this to balance the amount of GFA allowed to build based on the plan development with um, optimizing the FAR and the efficiency. These are some of the parametric modeling through generative components. Transparent skin, we've, we've talked about, Mr. Gu mentioned that as well. The winter condition, the summer condition. Reducing energy use by 21%. Uh, that equates in translation to about $3 million a year annual savings. Uh, and this building is really becoming a model for other development in the city uh, and the region. So it really, last slide, is, is a game changer. Uh, the comprehensive approach addresses key issues of resilience and urban design and all of the challenges that these urban centers are facing today. It houses a mix of uses, conserves resources, meshing with regional mass transit, and providing human scale spaces that add delight to the daily experience. It presents new ideas, the Shanghai Tower, for how tall buildings can be sustainable and people-centered for the future. Thank you.